Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast. Buffet here again, and it is one of the best races all season, the Texas Roval. It's a doubleheader in the Lone Star State, guys. 30 races to go for the championship. We have won the last two events, and they were maximum points days for Jeff Burton. The momentum is going our way, but guess what, guys? I put a link at the bottom, or not a link, but a hashtag saying stay humble for a reason. And anything can happen at the Texas Roval. We'll go back to last season 2006 well guess what we crashed out at texas roval and it, it it took us out of championship contention so check this out thursday you had the texas roval event a good sunshine um beating the bag in action track and then that later that weekend on sunday you had the big 500 miles so uh 500 mile event so you have two races at texas motor speedway and then once that's over we're going out west to settle the winston cup for 2007 Here's your updated point standings. Dale Jarrett, 271 points out. He's going to have to win the next three races and have a tremendous amount of luck. I would realistically take him out of contention, but only one thing that I'm not willing to do it over is we get the Roval. It's it's the final wild card race of the season. If Jarrett has a miraculous win there and he gets some, some action from Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon crashing out and myself, he could still be in the hunt for the championship, so I'm not ruling him out just yet. Mark Martin, though, a buck 15. He was 90 points out in Mar uh, not Martinsville. Pfft, Mark Martin, Martinsville. Oh, God. No, Rockingham. Jeff Gordon, who was dominant earlier in the season. I mean, it was a Winston Cup lock for him halfway through the season. He had a 6.7 average finish. Look at that. 9.9. And for Jeff Burton, ninth win of the season... Our average finish is at a 9.2. It has not been a perfect year for any of these championship contenders, but absolutely. Realistically, three dogs are in the hunt, but I'm not willing to take out Dale Jarrett. I still think there's a Hail Mary opportunity still there for the eighth camp. So we've touched on the schedule. Well, we talked about the point situation. We're going to Texas Motor Speedway for some bait and banging road course, roval action. Let's settle this championship. Here we go, folks. Alrighty, folks, here we go. We qualified, what, 14th? Daryl Wolf, the Martinsville upset winner, qualified on pole. This is it, guys. Three races to go to the championship. This road course is unlike anything else on the circuit. The Daytona road course is much more of a prestigious, finesse type of road course. This, I'll be honest with you, is a flat out demolition derby. There's going to be very few fenders that are not bent after this race. It is a roval for a reason. Let's go ahead and sit it down. Track side. The Texas 500K. Texas Motor Speedway is the site for today's NASCAR Winston Cup Road Race. There's not an empty seat in the house for the race today. This is something new for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. This is a great infield layout, and I'm glad to see them come here. The fans have a right to be excited. It's going to be a great show. Rusty Wallace is one of those drivers who always seems to be running up front. He's had an incredible run of success in winning races and finishing in the top ten in points. Add to that a solid qualifying program, and it's no big surprise that Rusty is one of NASCAR's winningest drivers. Jeff Burton will try to use this race to close in on the points lead. He just needs to keep digging like he has been. Sometimes when drivers reach the top five in points, they start to push themselves too hard on race day and wind up losing spots instead. I'm sure he doesn't want that. Bill Elliott owned and drove for his own race team for six years before joining Ray Evernham in 2001. You know, driving for your own race team is a tough deal. I think Bill was happy to get back to worrying about one thing, being fast out there on the racetrack. Alrighty, folks, here we go. Texas Motor Speedway. It's going to get exciting here. So this track is kind of a reverse, right? Instead of making the initial left turns mostly, it's it's kind of a right-hand racetrack because you start coming the opposite direction going here through the D-shaped front straightaway. 
you carry so much speed here, right? You got to get through the gears. You just got through a slow sleeping carousel, very flat. So you're getting through the gears here. You're, you're trying to get your car hyped up. You need a lot of acceleration here. You're going to go through what is called NASCAR three and four here. It's going to be your one and two, right? You're going the opposite direction. Yeah, it's crazy, but you're going to carry about a good 165, maybe 170 miles per hour here. Maybe a little bit of drafting as well. But you're going to carry all this speed, all this momentum, and you're going to have to just dump it and make a sharp, sharp right-hand corner that makes, I, I mean, I'm telling you, this, this, this corner bottlenecks badly. And it, it's going to bite you. It's going to bite you. It just jumps out of nowhere. This right here bottlenecks sharp angles that's what we wrecked last year and then after that you go underneath the a sports side you got a lazy left hander here pretty flat then you gotta go through a very i would say spacious um s's here and this is gonna carry to a very very wide sweeping i would say watkins Glen style carousel but it is going to get difficult on corner exit just like at daytona you have to be patient off this corner. You can't just throttle it to the line like you want to at the Daytona Road Course. You have to be patient because the outside wall is concrete and it will destroy your race car. It's a flat, sharp angle, and it's not going to fare too well for your race car. But absolutely, that is a lap around the Texas Road Course. Here we go. This race is ran on a Thursday, and then the next race will be ran on a Sunday. So two races here. To help decide a Winston Cup champion, of course, next uh, next week in this playthrough. Uh, of course, it would be California, where the uh, the championship will be crowned. This is, you got to warm up big time here. These cats, I'm telling you, these guys will slow down so badly. But we crashed in this corner right there. We already passed it. We crashed in that last season. It ended our championship hopes. So this race is going to be a battle of attrition. It's not a finesse track. It's not a, oh, I'm going to... Hit this S's. I'm going to go through this carousel. You got to shift here, shift here. No, this is just a demolition derby track. It, it truthfully is. It's, it is the ultimate demolition derby track here on Thunder 2003. And it's a load of fun. I love the speedway portion. You carry all this momentum, man. I mean, all this speed. 162, and you got to just go all the way down to literally 67 miles per hour. You have to dump 100 miles per hour of speed that quickly and it's so flat here that even if your car is extremely loose it's still way too flat to rotate one of these big heavy bulky stock cars and you will go off the course run at 16th here we're going to update on your race leader here as this road course event transpires here so uh jimmy johnson's out front that'd be really cool to see him win he won the donington night race earlier this season three opportunities left for a driver to uh, get a win here in 2007. Now, Dale Jarrett comes out of nowhere. Door slams us into the fence. Whoa, I didn't even see him there. Hello, Dale. I didn't even know he was there. Oh, my God, man. Like, literally, I went to the inside. I, I didn't even know he was there. I had no idea. And now Jeff Gordon's behind us. And this is why I did not rule out Dale Jarrett for the championship. If a crazy... Situation happens here. Oh, sorry, Tony. And he has a great finish. Perhaps Gordon, Mark Martin, or myself have a bad finish. You know, God forbid. He could still be realistically in this hunt. And we know the Yates cars have some tremendous horsepower at Texas Motor Speedway's Oval. I mean, heck, Ricky Rudd is running so good there. Jeff Gordon punts us in the back. Thank you, buddy. Kind of brake checked him there. But I'm telling you, man, this is a physical track. This is not a finesse track this is not a gentleman's road course as mr robbie noonan would say good bud there this is a demolition derby five out of 22 here we gotta we gotta get on the move on here we gotta we gotta hang tough with these cats try to get a little bit of draft off terry labani here this is the best passing corner too so it's also the most dangerous but it's also the best passing corner and that wall is not very forgiving. It is a sharp angle. Ooh, 46 car hops out of line there. This, oh, sorry, Terry. This is a very um, hard place to pass here because it's a flat corner and you want to throttle it. You want to throttle it. But you have to be so patient on it. And you've got to, you've got to come back up to the straightaway 
and that wall will reach out because the car is flat. It, when you push the throttle on a flat surface, it wants to just plow. It just don't turn like it does with the banking. Anyway, so it's a 22 lap event. Oh my god! Huge spin out here! Wow! Holy cow, that was that was insanity there. I was about to say the, the pit sequence will probably be around lap 12, 13, but man, with, with, with racing like that, we could see a caution very soon. That was wild, man. I mean, it looked like he bounced from one end to the other. Oh, Craving gets really loose off the corner. I'm telling you, it is a demolition derby event. There is there, there's no safe place here, guys. It's a tough track to just race on. Add 42 other cars, you're going to have some good racing. We need to try to get a run here on Jarrett. I don't want to door slam him because we still got a lot of racing to go. We want to keep our fenders in good shape. Get a little bit of nose damage here, I think. Yeah, you can see just a slight wrinkle on the fender. Nothing too bad like we had at lap one at the previous Sonoma race. So anyways, you got Kyle Petty right there. He's having, he's had, I, I gotta say, an amazing season. The RPM, or RPE program, the Richard Petty Enterprises team. Wimmer and Kyle Petty, I'm telling you, man, they, Mopar has stepped up their commitment to the 45 and the 43 bunch and they have been truly a remarkable storyline here in 2007 we're following Dale Jarrett here he knows he's gonna have to probably win this race hello Jarrett oh sorry buddy I'm willing to move Jarrett I'm willing to move him I, I he's not my teammate we might drive forwards but it's all good there we go gets a little loose opens the door don't even have to make contact there we go thank you Jesus so now we're up to 12th place here. We're going forward. This is the same thing that happened last year. We, were, I think we were running like ninth place. Like we were going forward. And then we freaking crash out at this corner right here on the right side. We just overshot it. We hit that wall on the left side. Creamed our crop when we were done. It was on fire. So the goal today is to survive. And truth be told, our goal is a top 10. I don't even care about leading the lap. I just want a top 10. That's all I want. Oh, dang. Dale got super loose there. I just I was watching my mirror. I didn't even hit the throttle. Someone just spun out or something. Oh, no, they're pitting. That's what it is. Okay. I was fixing to say, what the heck were they doing back there? So the pit stops are already underway. Lap 10 here. This makes a crew chief stomach n knots because do you pit here or do you just wait for that caution? Because, I mean, with a track like this and the racing this close and when they don't when they're not close, they're freaking slipping and sliding. It really makes you wonder. Do you want to wait for that caution? That's what's... That's the tough call here. That's the tough call. I don't know if I can even make that call, the truth be told here. I don't know. That's why I'm trying to figure out where the rest of the cars are pitting. Because all it takes is... Oh, oh sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to do that to you, 113. All it takes is one bozo to blend on the racetrack, and you got a fender bender and a yellow flat. Look at that! Look, that's what I'm talking about! All it takes is one bozo, he just door slammed Rusty Wallace's Ford, Ashton Lewis in the 46 car. That's all it takes. One bozo. Gotta hang out of the throttle. Very lengthy there. These cats are staying out. I want to pit with the race leaders if I can. And speaking of which, Dale Earnhardt Jr. out front here at the Texas Roval. But there's a driver up in the top five that I think could be another opportunity for him. Jamie McMurray. He won Sonoma back in the summer. He won the Daytona Road Course back in 2004. Can he win today at the Texas Roval? Oh, look at that three car pass. Shades of the first time we went to the Texas Roval and we did that we did that to Ryan Newman. That was a crazy pass, I tell you, to win that race. It was fun. So that cat looks like he's pitting. Or he's gonna try to take out the 43 car. I don't know what he was doing there. That was funny. So uh he like literally like drove up to him, hit his corner panel, and used him as a glancing board. So it's lap 13 out of 22. We're in the top five here. Pit stop's gotta resume. For us at some point we have to get down pit road we have to do something 
There's a 46 car. Ooh, a little hot in the corner. Use up the tires while they last. Sorry, 46. I think we've got to pit this time. We've stayed out long enough. We don't want to lose too much track position. I think we're going to need to take tires here. I don't think... I think two tires would be a mistake. Oh, uh, we got a Bozo parked there. I'm not pitting. Bozo's parked. Biffle is literally stuck there. I'm not pitting just yet. I'm not pitting just yet. Literally, Biffle was parked there, guys. I don't know if he got moving or not, but I would just... I'd be devastated if I pitted and they didn't throw a yellow. Or they did throw the yellow and trapped us a freaking lap down. Oh, I'm, I did it again to the 46 car. I am so sorry, buddy. 115-point lead entering today's race. We need to take care of the race car. We're going to have to pit this time. I, I thought the yellow was going to wave for the 16 car. Guess not. It looked like he was stuck there. i got to get on pit road. Okay, there we go. Coming down pit road. There he is. Uh, no damage repair. Keep the car loosey-goosey. Uh, get the acceleration up. Come on, team. Look, we may not win this race. I just want a top 10. Truth be told, just a top 10. That's all I'm asking for the Sicko Ford team. Knock on wood, hope and pray to God we can freaking win this race, or at least this championship, guys. Three races to go. Only two races left after this event. Come on, team. Come on, team. We got the momentum going. We got to just keep digging, man. Stay humble. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Perfect. 15.6 second pit stop. Great job. All right. We lost a little track position there, but it's okay. Those guys pitted a little early. Their tires are pretty good here, but guess what? We have fresh, fresh good years. Now, I don't know the, the if you can pit and lose a lap here or not. I don't know, right? I don't know how close you have to be to the leader. Um, I know at tracks like Pocono, you can pit and not lose, lose a lap. But here at a very, very short, honestly, road course, I would imagine you would lose a lap here. But don't quote me on that. So, we're 21st here. We got to make up some track position. This is going to be difficult. But I'm confident in this team we can do it. Drivers are still pitting here so we can get a little bit of track position. There's Wimmer. We pitted right behind, so at least we're caught up to where he is. We need to get away from him as he blends onto the racetrack here. Oh, hello, Wimmer. He just dive bombs the corner like we would. <laughs> He's learning from us. Go uh, too wide through the S's. A little, little bit of a little love tap there. Kurt Busch going to open the door there. Come on, come on, come on. Get the car to rotate. Kick the throttle and go. Whoa, Bush a little loose there. They just get so loose on that final corner. It's like shades of Watkins Glen. They're slipping and sliding. Keselowski holding off Kyle Busch 2012. Not 2012. It was, uh, what was it, 2013, 2011. It was one of, it was one of those years. Whoa. Maybe I'm getting mistaken with Marcus Ambrose. That's what I'm thinking. Anyways, uh, Kurt Busch right there on the bottom. There we go. A little contact. Sorry, buddy. I want that position. We need points. I'm thinking a top 10 here would be just... It would just be fine and dandy. Five laps to go here at the Roval. Uh, what the heck's going on up here? Those guys look like they were slowing down for a second. Maybe a little contact got them loosey-goosey. Either, either way... We got a pack of cars right up here. That's, what, six cars? Yeah, that's six spots right there. That would easily put us well inside the top ten. And Jeff Gordon is among them. So we need to get up there and pass him. As we got, we're on, what, four laps, five laps? Oh, I'm sorry, Kurt. Give you some room, buddy. Got Jeff Purvis and his Pontiac right there in front of us through the carousel. We'll get a top ten, our top five update here. Uh, soon enough. Whoa! Luckily, Kurt Busch cleared us there. Let's see. Who's out front? Jimmy Johnson. Dale Jarrett. Again, this is why I did not count out Dale Jarrett for the championship. Yes, he was over 200 points out. But if he has a, a finish like this and he catches a break, he can very well put himself back in championship contention. Granted, he's going to probably have to win California and win the Texas Oval. But either way, he needs, he needs a break. And... If he can finish up front, he might be able to gain 50, maybe 60 points on all three of us. I don't know where Martin Martin is, though. So, got to be mindful of that. But I want to get around Jeff Gordon here. Oh, God. See how tight the corner gets like right there? I mean, you can't commit to the throttle. You will hit the wall. And these bozos are slow. 
Let me get around him. Three one. I'm going for it, buddy. Ooh, sorry, Steve Park. Up to 13th here. There's Jeff Gordon. Caution. We pretty much end the race here, so this is crunch time. Ooh, sorry, Rusty. The battle for 10th place. That top 10. Diving around the, the Miller Lite Ford. The crossover him here. Uh, the gas, uh, the gas, pick up the momentum. The way our gears are working in this uh, setup I have, we get up the speed kind of slow right off that corner because the way the gear ratios work. So if you can keep your acceleration up, it just helps your corner exit. Now we're in the top 10 here. Again, a caution would end the race, so you got to get them while you can. I think that's Kenseth. Yep, that's Matt Kenseth. Don't overdo the corner like we did last year because that's what we did. We overshot that corner. Blew the engine. So that would have run down Matt Kenseth. I think that's Jimmy Spencer ahead of us. White flag out here at the Texas Roval. Can we catch Matt Kenseth before this thing is over? Who knows? Oh, Kenseth gets a little squirrely there. The race leader is Jimmy Johnson and Dale Jarrett in second. So we'll have to see how this one plays out. I want to catch at least Kenseth here. Give us ninth place. That'd be great. Jarrett's going to gain points on us. That's okay, though. This is a wild card race. This is expected. Don't take the risk. Look, well, we died in the corner. Just wasn't close enough to catch Kenseth. Just take care of your equipment. Let's get the top ten. And we'll go racing again on Sunday for the Texas Oval. Again, it's a doubleheader event. And with that, I think Johnson just won the Texas Roval. Wimmer is going to be ahead of Rusty Boss, but we'll finish 10th place. I would say that's pretty good. Survive and advance. And Johnson leads by four seconds to pick up his second win of 2007. McMurray and Darrell Wolf both get a top five. So the, look at the interesting uh, lineup for the top 10. I mean, Darrell Wolf, Jay McMurray. You got Robbie Gordon. You got Spicer, uh, Spencer, Kenseth. A uh, bunch of cats who generally are not up front. Uh, at least this season, and uh, definitely an interesting top 10 here, but wow, domination. Check this out. So Johnson starts third. He leads 16 laps out of the 22. Uh, maximum points day for him. Dale Jarrett does not lead a lap, but he's going to come away with 170 points there. We're going to come away with, um, let's see, 10th place, 134. So we'll, we'll lose a good, uh, a good 40 uh, 46 points there. Let's see where the rest of the cats are. So Jeff Gordon, 118. So he's going to lose about maybe uh, 62, no, 52 points to Jeff Gordon. He'll actually gain, rather. Uh, Mark Martin, though, no laps led, 112. He'll gain about 58. So he's going to gain about 50 points on uh, Gordon and Mark Martin. But for us, he's going to gain a good 40, uh, about 46. So it's a net gain for Dale Jarrett. It's not over. It's not over for DJ. He could still win this championship. That's why I didn't rule him out. Because if he goes to the Roval and has a great run, it could be a opportunity for him. But he's going to have to win probably the Texas Oval and then win California next. Through the field here, your bottom of the barrel is going to be Bobby Hamilton, Ashton Lewis, Greg Biffle, and Ricky Craven. Those are, unfortunately, your bottom of the barrel here at Texas Motor Speedway for the Texas Roval. Wow, that was fun. Um, survive and advance. Two races left to go in the season, guys. Two races left to go. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, hit that notification bell down below. Upload these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Diecast Buffet. And check it out. Jamie McMurray, top three finish. I tell you what, though. That cat is really good on the road courses. With all that being said, folks, have a great one. Diecast Buffet, signing off.